Hey everybody, it's Cindy Ingram and I am here from the Art Curator for Kids and this is the first of my weekly live Facebook session, uh, live, Facebook live session and the topic of the day is uh, a big one and one that I have been asked again and again and again and again and again over the last three years but I somehow can never seem to get a post written about it because every single time I try, I don't know, I get writer's block, I don't know, what, I don't know, never know what I want to say, or I know what to say, but it's just, I don't know, there's some something that keeps me from writing it every time. I even have the images all ready for the post and everything, but just still haven't written it. So today we're going to talk about the nudity question, which is what to do about nudity in the art classroom when looking and learning from works of art. So I have a bunch of thoughts and ideas to share with you about this topic and I got some great emails. I sent out an email to my email list telling them, you know, that I was going to be talking about this topic and I got some great emails back to, um, that, you know, gave me their thoughts and so I have some thoughts from other people as well. Speaking of which, I left it sitting over there in the printer. I had a really good quote. I will probably escape to go get that in a little bit. Because I have a, there was one person who wrote an email and I just wanted to write it word for word. It was so good. So we are going to go through several different uh, thoughts. And I, I just realized that I can't see my comments. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so if you have a comment or a question or an idea or anything that pops in your head while you're watching, feel free to ch type it on into the chat. I sh I'll be able to see it. Say hello, um, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, any, any of your experiences, I would love to hear them and, and hear from you. So, again, we are talking about nudity in the art classroom. So, let me take a drink of my water before I get on with my presentation here. It's been a long teaching day. Uh, end of the year, man. It's hard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you guys are having the same situation, but the kids are just going crazy. And the, no one wants to do anything, and including me. Uh, so... Yeah, we're making it through, but by the skin of our teeth, I'm sure, as a lot of teachers across the uh, the world are at this point of the year. So anyway, I'm trying not to count down the days, but it's getting to the point where I want to count down the days. All right, so I'm going to start with a story of kind of how I came to be, and in, in, in my opinion, on nudity in the art room. It kind of comes from a, a couple different uh, viewpoints. So the first being, I used to be a gallery teacher at the Amon Carter Museum in Fort Worth, Texas. So this was right out of, well, it was about a year out of um, college. And my job was, you know, to teach all the tour group kids that came through. And the Amon Carter Museum is an American art museum. It's a really great museum, but it's all focused on American art. And it's designed in a way that's kind of circular. The main, the main permanent collection is circular. And you basically, when you start, you see everything. There's no avoiding any artwork in that museum once you've started on that second floor. So one of the key pieces in the collection is Thomas Aiken's The Swimmers. So I don't know if you know of that artwork, but it is basically about 10 nude boys swimming in a swimming hole. And we taught mostly fourth graders and fifth graders at the time. That was our sort of main um, demographic for our tours because they were studying American history that year, or Texas history and American history. And uh, we could not get through with the groups of kids without passing Thomas A. Against the Swimmers. So I got really good at dealing with that situation because, you know, I would have two or three tours in a day and I would do this four or five times a week, or four times a week, and I just, there was no way around it. I had to deal with Thomas Aiken swimmers every single day. <laughs> so I, I, got, I just got good at like diffusing the situation. And that's what basically what I would do. And that's my main strategy now is that if something comes up and the kids start giggling about something or if I'm showing them an artwork with nudity, I just shut it down. I say, you know what? We're not doing that right now. And I was like, and then that's it. <laughs> and they know when I say that, they're like, I mean it. I'm like, no, we're not doing it. We're not going to make the jokes. We're not going to do all the giggling. We're just going to, we're going to be mature about it. And usually if I don't, if it does, if they're in, their giggling doesn't get a rise out of me, then they give up on it because, you know, oftentimes they're just wanting to get a rise out of the teacher. If that doesn't work, then they'll just stop. So that's my number one strategy is just to say, no, not doing it. 
So that's uh, I know it's a, it's it's a, it's a silly strategy. I think this is probably why um, the post has been so hard for me to write because that's really my reaction is no, nope, not today. Um, but I do have a lot of other notes. It's not just more than it's not just no, not today. I've got a lot more to share on the topic. So um, that is sort of my first experience with it is you just. Sometimes you just, there's nudity that you have to show. If you're teaching art history, you can't not show Michelangelo's David when you're talking about the Renaissance. You can't look at ancient Greek and Roman art without seeing nudes. Um, a lot of African art, you cannot, you just cannot get by without seeing nudes. And, and you wouldn't want to because it's such a vital and important part of their art. So we have to figure out ways to discuss it with our students so that they are comfortable with it so that they're not going to go running home and telling their parents what you show them in art today and how gross it was. So then the parent gets all up in arms because they're uninformed and they're listening to their student who's just trying to get a rise out of everybody, you know, as they do. So um, I've got so several several different um, tactics here. So um, another one I think is really important is a lot of teachers choose to avoid nudity altogether. And I think in, the, in elementary school, that's perfectly fine because you know what, you, you teach what, I taught, when I was taught elementary, I taught 750 students and that was 750 students and their parents that I might upset and, and that's just not worth the hassle and when there's other stuff to be looked at. Um, so with elementary, don't show it if you don't want to, that's fine. But when you're, when you're getting in the upper grades, even in middle school and in high school, I think it's important to show nudity in art for several different reasons. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the why of why I choose to show nudity in my in my art classroom and I'm currently teaching grades six through ninth and I do show nudity. Um, and the thing is that our culture, um, and this is what kind of I reiterate and teach my students, is that our culture teaches us through media, through magazines, through television, through everything, that bodies are dirty, that bodies are to be ashamed of, that bodies are purely for sexual pleasure, and that if they are not pleasurable to look at, then they're not valuable. Um, and I think it's a really negative message. And if we go about teaching art with nudity through that lens, and we feed that fuel, and we and we treat it as if it's weird and if it's bad and if it's dirty, then we're adding to that, that epidemic that our country is going through. When really our bodies are powerful, wonderful things and they do great things. They, they make people, they, they run and they jump and they, you know, like they do so many things. And if you just really like, just stop and think about like what the body is capable of. I mean, it's amazing. You think about like when you're sick, what everything that happens when you're sick, you know, like our bodies are great and they're good and they're wonderful and they're not to be ashamed of. They're not to be um, belittled because they're not perfect, that there is no perfect. And that we need, I think by showing art with nudity in it, we can help that discussion. So there's my little rant on that topic. <laughs> so I think it is important to include it. And if, it, if at all possible. Now, if you're in a district, they say, no, don't do it. Like, you got to do what they say. But I think in most cases, and we're going to talk about some situations where, um, you know, uh, some strategies you can use, that in most cases, it's totally fine. I think, you know, you hear things hyped up in the news. Someone got fired for showing a nude artwork or something like that. Those are hyped up. They're probably, there's probably another story to it. Their teacher was probably already on the way of getting suspended or fired or whatever, and then that this was the last straw. You know, there's always, they might have been already on a performance plan. You know, you know, like those things in the news are hyped up, and I think in most situations it's fine. So, um, I saying that now, I'm like, oh gosh, you're gonna go show nudity and get fired, but uh, you will not get fired. I really, <laughs> as long as you don't get go get weird about it, then you're fine. So that's another thing is I tell my students is, you know, when I shut it down, I say, no, we're not going to do this. I also say, you know, it's only weird if you make it weird. You know, if, if the teacher's up there feeling uncomfortable about it, feeling weird about showing bodies and, and 
then the student that's going to rub off on the student. So uh, you have to be a professional and you have to be mature about it. And it's only weird if you make it weird. So there you go. There's my preaching. <laughs> so we'll get into some more tactical strategies um, up here next. I think I um, made sure I had my rant portion done on my notes. I think I moved rant. Okay. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to move into strategies. So, and feel free to chime in. I know there's not a lot of, a whole lot of commenting, but I, I see some, we have some people here live, so feel free to chime in with your thoughts whenever you have one or if you have a question or anything like that. So, um, one of the good uh, topics of conversation, and I got this from a person who emailed me, and I've forgotten her name, and I wish I would have, it was, it starts with an I. And I'm so sorry to remember your name. Uh, I get a lot of email. I'm very sorry. But she and I had a great email back and forth for several emails. Um, but anyway, she does a lesson at the beginning of her sixth grade classes of nude versus naked. So I think a lot of it is in what terms do you use? So the term naked has this sort of sexual connotation to it. And it makes people feel a little icky when they hear that word. So if you stay away from the word naked and you stick with the word nude, which is um, more acceptable and what they, you know, use in art terminology. So, you know, having that conversation with, uh, could help the students, you know, go through that. And then also, um, like, calling them the, the body's figures. You know, like, we're not looking at a naked body, we're looking at a nude figure. And I know it's like the same thing, but having that sort of slight change in language can kind of veer the discussion into a more professional way and, and help people see the, the other side of it. So, um, one, yeah, so the first one is, oh, my breath is off, do not disturb. I got a lot of emails. That one, and I get so many, so many emails, people wanting to redesign my site and all sorts of things. That's what that, that's what that one was. I like, know I don't want my site redesigned right now. Stop emailing. Okay. Um, anyway, so off topic. All right. And the, the quote that I wanted to use sitting over there on my printer is really good. So hold on one second. You're going to look at my daughter's beautiful artwork while I go get that note thing note from the printer. all sorts of uh, stuff behind me so any, if I move the chair weird you're gonna hear <laughs> um, it's all an illusion my friends we've got trash at my feet it's not trash Just stuff that needs to be put together okay so the person who and I wrote down her name I remember no Rebecca thank you Rebecca emailed me and, and she wrote this long uh, email and it was excellent and I really hope that I, it actually is Rebecca, because if it's not, I'm going to feel bad. Rachel? Rebecca. I think it's Rebecca. <laughs> All right. So what she says, and I'm going to read her quote, and then I'll talk about it some more. She says, I have found that if we begin studying the human figure in art chronologically and within cultural context, beginning with the Venus of Willendorf, then the composites of Egypt, then archaic Greece, and eventually into the accuracy of males in classical Greek, the gradual changes are seen more as artistic developments in human representation and end up not being a big deal. We scaffold up to it. And so I really liked that quote. I actually have another quote from her, <laughs> her email to use later. But, you know, that you can't study art history without this. One of the very first works of art of all time, Venus of Willendorf, is a nude. And it's a nude with you know, exaggerated female parts. And you can't get around that, but you can't not show Venus of Willendorf if you're showing prehistoric art. Like, you can't. It's like iconic, you know? So, you know, if you if you build up to it, and then if you if you treat it respect respectfully, and you talk about how these cultures viewed the body as beautiful, and the body as strong and powerful, and the body is capable of of creating people and they're like all of this thing like that that's that's really important and so if you study in art history and even in um, 
I still have it, and I, I'm gonna, I, I, I say it's important to show nudity, but there's like these really awesome African sculptures with, um, really, okay, I love them, and they have like little breastfeeding ones, and I just think they're really wonderful. They're from the Congo, and they, but they have really pointy breasts, <laughs> and so I think that's one that I'm like, my kids will lose their minds if they see that. So I still haven't like gotten the the um the um confidence to 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 show them that yet. I'm that one scares me a little bit, but you know, it's it's part of it's part of culture. It's part of our life. So um yes. So we need to teach kids why nudity is used in art, for what purpose? Um, you know, the ancient Greek beauty, and I, t I usually always bring up, you know, when I was in college and I took, I had to take two drawing classes, and the drawing classes were 100%, pretty much 100% of nude drawing. That's all we did, was nude figure drawing. Um, I think we drew some boxes, too, and nudes. <laughs> like, those are the two things for an entire year, you know, eight hours a week, that's what we did. And it's a valuable art exercise. You learn, you know, you spend four hours looking at a nude figure. You don't see it as a nude figure anymore. Um, so it's important. And um, so it's just as a as a whole. And I also bring up like the uh, Carrie. I will get to your question in just a second. It's a really good one um, because I actually have been wavering on that one. But I'm going to get to it. Let me finish this one thought real fast, and then I want I'll answer that question. Um, and I talk about like uh, the stories of Michelangelo when he was studying the body to make that those perfect figures that he made that he would like sneak into the morgue in the middle of the night like they they he had some sort of in with the guy at the morgue and like they would let him in even though it was like sacrilegious um, and he would study the bodies and dissect the bodies and try to figure out what was going on inside so that he could depict them better like you know I tell them that story I'm like that this is like an important thing that they're that they're learning and through through um, learning about the body, they're making better art. So, so Carrie asked, and this is a question like I was even considering because I'd like to offer some sort of like download or freebie or something with all my posts when I can. And so I thought about, okay, well, what, what if I can make something for this? What would I make? And ultimately, I didn't end up making anything because I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> but one of my ideas was what Carrie said. I'm see if I can scroll down. And she said, would you inform the students' parents that studying the human form is part of your curriculum? And so I was like, oh, I'll make a letter, you know, like a form letter that, that the, the, then the teacher can send to the parents. And then, then ultimately I was like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think um, you're right with your second half of your question is that bringing it to their intention makes it an issue. By sending the letter, it's making it weird. And it's only weird if you make it weird. So I, I think I would not do that because I think it would, I don't know. I would think it would just open a can of worms that you are not ready for. <laughs> you know, I think if you show the nudity art respectfully and you do it within your curriculum in a respectful way and you, you know, you do all of that, then that it won't end up coming back to the parents in any sort of negative light. But if you started out like, hey, this is a thing and it might be negative to you, like you're you're like framing that as a, oh yeah, this is a negative thing that we we have to look out for. So I think it will make it an issue. So I won't, I would advise against it. Again, I've never actually tried it. So, but I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I thought about it and uh, ultimately they said no. So, all right, we have, I'm just gonna connect my, look at my notes here. So, um, also fitting it into your curriculum. So if you teach a curriculum, like an, an AP art history class, or like I teach at a classical school, the examples of art that they include in the curriculum that they want us to use which I don't necessarily use, but uh, the, the examples of art are nudity. I worked at an online high school where the, the classes were already written. Those had nudes in them. So I was like, oh, fine, we're good, you know? But if you don't have anything like that, then um, just make sure that every artwork that you choose is something that fits into your lesson in some sort of meaningful way, that you're not just choosing a nudity artwork just for the sake of 
a, a nude artwork, you know, that it fits into the context of your lesson planning and fits into the context of what you're studying as a whole. So, and you're being thoughtful about that. And that was another, the other quote, no, never mind, that quote is, I'm going to wait on that one. Okay. Um, okay, so the terminology, the context, meaningful reasons, yeah, you have meaningful reasons for creating, for choosing that artwork. And then the last one really is that you need to read your rapport with your students and your overall school culture. So if you have a great rapport with your students, if you're seen as a teacher that they love and respect and that they look forward to your class and that they feel safe in your class and that they feel like they can be themselves in your class, then you're not going to have an issue because they trust you and you trust them. So I feel like if you've created that sort of really lovely environment for your students, they're not well, they're not necessarily going to go rat you out to somebody. You know, like they're, they're going to be like, oh, my aunt, mom, I can't believe she showed us this when, when you're like their favorite teacher. You know, so I think if, if, if you've created that environment, then you're good. Um, you know, if, if you're in a situation where you don't have that, if you have maybe a negative relationship with some of your students and, and, your, and some of your parents or your administration or um, the other teachers at your campus and you feel like people are out to get you, and I know that that happens at schools, I, I think I felt that before, and um, that if you, if you are in sort of a negative situation, then maybe you know, make sure you're a little bit more sensitive to these topics that, you know, if, if someone is out to get you or whatever, then maybe, you know, just tone it back a little bit. I don't know. So I think it's just important to, to create that level of trust with your, with your students and, and, and that they are not likely to go run and tell on you if, if they've, been offended by something you know because I had one student who was we were sh I was showing Hindu sculpture which were nudes and they're very different nudes than like a, a classical sculpture it was you know they're very curvy and they're very um, just very like voluptuous you know and and they're beautiful and she was very upset by them um, and she was a Oh, and she, and she, you know, she spoke to me after class and she was like, I, you know, I just really don't understand why we're looking at this. I don't understand it. So like she, I had created a space for her where she, it, she was okay coming to me and explaining why she was feeling this way. And so she didn't go tell somebody else and, 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 and wrap me out. You know, she talked to me about it and we, we talked it through and I helped her understand, you know, the value of looking at that art and that sort of thing. So I think a relationship, developing relationships with your students is really important and um, in these sort of situations where if they are feeling uncomfortable in any way or if they don't understand why you're showing the art that they they can they feel okay enough to talk to you about it and that you can educate them more on it and you can have that conversation so um, another converse and I, I just realized I skipped past it on my notes is that another conversation to have is censorship you know there was a um, the woman who it, I emailed back and forth with, who I don't remember her name, I'm so sorry. I, uh, anyway, she told me about a lesson she had where a recent um, Iranian uh, official, I think it was like a government leader, went to Italy and the Italians covered up the, the Roman sculptures, like censored the nudity on them for the Iranian guy who came because, you know, in their culture, you know, you don't have nudity and you don't show the body in that way. And so they were trying to be sensitive to this, this, this Iranian leader. But in doing that, they upset a lot of people. Like a lot of Italians were really upset. A lot of Islamic women were really upset. Um, and, and so it created this whole really debacle of, of talking about censorship and, and talking about like human rights and all sorts of things. So that would be a really cool discussion. And she said, you know, she led a, that discussion with her students and they, and they shared some news articles about it and talked about the different sides of it and how, how, you know, that is viewed culturally. 
and that could be a really cool like contemporary um, perspective on this topic with your students so I really liked that and um, I will she gave me some links and so I will put those in the comments when I'm done um, if you're interested in reading about that more because I read them through and they were really interesting and I think uh, it would be a really cool, uh, interesting topic conversation with your students. So, oh, yeah, that's all my thoughts about nudity. Let me just look through my notes. Oh, you know what? This person, Rebecca, should have written this blog post for me that I haven't been able to write because she wrote me this beautiful email. I'm going to quote it again. Um, and, um, she says, I think, oh, yeah, ooh, why can't I see your full comment, Carrie? It cuts off at half dress. I'm gonna, before I read this quote, I'm gonna read here. Yeah, Toulouse Lautrec had all, you know, the, the women from the Moulin Rouge, and they're like half dressed, and some artworks are sexual and then uh, another you know this is going uh, off on another tangent is you know i had to my ninth graders this year did a street art project and i w was giving them street artists to research and they you know i made sure i googled each one and then i looked in the google images search because that's always where the kids look first is the google images search they don't even look at any articles first and then I, I checked like the first three or four pages of all the street artist names when I Googled them to make sure that there was no nudity on like the first four pages because you never know, you know, what you're gonna, what you're gonna happen upon on the internet. So, um, while I, you know, a contemporary artist, you know, might be talking about things like the, this societal body image thing and it might have some things that you're you're not comfortable talking about with students just yet so like you know a little a little bit of censorship is good so um and carrie i am sorry i can't see anything past what you said when it says toulouse is half dress but i figured that might have been the end of your comment um Yeah, it's you want to be ready to lead the discussion. I think you know you be, be prepared if you're if you're really gonna go go for it and have that discussion, then um, be ready for it and try to think of a different artwork to reference. <laughs> so I think some avoidance is fine. You know, you you don't want to open up any cans of worms that you're not ready to ready to deal with. Um, but yeah. Okay, so uh, Rebecca's comment here is, I think if a teacher has a good rapport with his or her students, has meaningful reasons to introduce the artwork, provides connections to the context and themes, and determines the meaning of the artwork to be developmentally appropriate, the lesson and the experience can be meaningful and not controversial. And so she sums it so perfectly. I didn't even need to do this. I could have just taken her email and posted it on the internet. <laughs> so she was awesome. But I love that. Like, you know, making sure that what you're showing is appropriate for the students is developmentally appropriate. It fits into the meaningful context of your curriculum. That, you know, you're doing it in a respectful and responsible way. Um, then you're going to be fine. And don't believe the hype when it comes to the internet and these sensationalist stories of people getting fired because um, the internet likes to take something and blow it out of proportion. And if this truly were an issue that this was happening frequently, we would hear about it a lot more. Like I Googled it and I, I came up with just a few and one of them was looked like it was totally blown out of proportion. So anyway, those are my thoughts about nudity and art. So, um, thank you for joining me today. And, um, oh yes, a Christian school. Um, that is, that's another one. It's like, you know, if, if your school, if, if your curriculum, um, has sort of, uh, taboos against that, then you're going to have a, a trickier time. Um, but I think, you know, especially you think about like Adam and Eve, surely you can show an Adam and Eve artwork. Maybe after, after the apple. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like especially. But then you like you say you want if you if you're only doing like Christian curriculum. Like what about Bernini's David and David and Goliath or Michelangelo's David and stuff like that. Like there's so much good Christian art that is that has nudes in it. Um, but again, it's 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 it's, it's um you've got administration to deal with and they probably are not as progressive as an art teacher would be in terms of 
those sort of discussions. Although I think it's worth having the discussion and saying, hey, look, you know, this is what I want to do. Um, what do you think? Can we, can we try it? Can we, you know, like at least, I don't know, be meaningful and professional about it for sure. So, okay. So that is, yeah, that is all. Thank you so much for joining me. And next week I'm going to do this every Tuesday at eight. And the next week's topic will be cultural appropriation and it will be, um, um, how to talk about, uh, non-Western cultures in a respectful way that doesn't, um, create an us versus them mentality. So we're going to do, we're going to talk about uh, non-Western art and teaching that next week at eight o'clock on Tuesday, eight central. And, um, yeah. So great. Thank you for joining me. And if you want to make sure you're notified when we have these sorts of things, you can go to artcuratorforkids.com slash subscribe and enter your email in there. And then I send um, emails to my list that um, tell when I'm you know, having these sorts of things. So, and also clicking like on my Facebook page so that I'll pop up on your, and your notifications when I go live as well. It's another thing you can do. So, um, yeah, Megan says trying to act very uninterested. I do that too. I'm just like, yeah, no big deal. You know, like don't even, doesn't, I don't even have any reaction at all. And because sometimes I just want a reaction, you know, I, I'm going to go off on a tangent again, but like I had a student this semester and I knew of him, I have, I teach in a very small school. So I knew this class was sort of like a problem class. Like they were bad for everybody. I was hearing horror stories all first semester and they were like, oh, just wait, just you wait till you get this class next semester. And so I get the class, but all first semester, I like was really mean to them <laughs> the whole year. And I have a hard time that with being mean to students, like just intentionally, but I was just like really strict. I wasn't mean, but I was just like really strict. So I was like, they're going to be bad. So I've got to start it now. So anyway, I, um, I, I go into this class like you know expecting the worst because for months that's all people have to told me about and I had this one kid and we were looking at two Fridas by Frida Kahlo and they're holding hands and he I could tell he was like pushing he was gonna see what he could how, how he could phase me and so he would be like oh, I think they're lesbians and I was like oh maybe they are yeah I can see that and then he you could see his face was like what <laughs> You know, he was expecting me to get upset and like getting him in trouble, and and then he did it like three times in a row, like tried to say something like super controversial, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, and then you know you could see he was just like visibly upset that I wasn't that 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 wasn't working, um, so the, I think you can use that same strategy with the nudity, like if they, you know, if they're making jokes about it, you know, just just don't let it fade you, you know, just don't face it, you know, or just, or just agree with it and be like, yeah, that's kind of, that's, or, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of an example to give you an exact phrase, but yeah, that strategy would work too. Like that sometimes they're just looking to get a rise out of you and, to, and they, and they're also looking to perform for their classmates. I have several classes where I have performers and, and they love their audiences. And if, if they can get their classmates to laugh, then they're going to, they're going to keep it. They're going to keep it going. But if you can shut it down and be like, no, we're not doing that, then no problems. So, okay. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, again, I think I've said that four times now, but <laughs> hopefully I will see you next week when we talk about teaching uh, non-Western art in a respectful way. Again, you can go to artcreatorforkids.com to read um, all my thoughts about art. And then you can go to artcreatorforkids.com slash subscribe to join my email list so you make sure you get all of my posts when they're posted as well as any notifications of my Facebook live sessions and things like that. So I am signing off for tonight. I will be watching for any questions or comments if you still have any. So feel free to keep, keep um, asking them in the comments. And then I'll also post those links that I was talking about in the comments here below um, after I'm signed off. All right. Have a lovely night. Thank you so much for joining me.